Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund, I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday the 11th of June 2025 and I'm here to give you your fusion news update of the week. And now on to our top headlines for today's episode. 1. TAE Technologies raises $150 million in funding for fusion energy development. 2. Fusion supply chain spending almost doubles in 2024 according to Fusion Industry Association. 3. Wendelstein 7X sets new performance records in nuclear fusion research. 4. We're definitely on the back foot. US risks losing fusion energy race to China, industry leaders warn. And 5. Kyoto Fujikura advanced fusion magnet tech. And make sure you stay till the end because, as usual, I have quite a few interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. 1. TAE Technologies raises $150 million in funding for fusion energy development. In a major vote of confidence, Google has once again backed California-based fusion firm TAE Technologies, according to TechCrunch. The tech giant, alongside other notable investors such as Chevron and Sumitomo Corporation of Americas, contributed to a new $150 million funding round, supporting TAE's next fusion prototype known as Copernicus. TAE, a member of the Fusion Industry Association, has now raised nearly $1.2 billion in total private investment, making them one of the most well-funded private fusion companies in the world. TAE's approach centres on a field-reversed configuration, or FRC design, an alternative to the more common tokamak method. The company believes this unique strategy offers a pathway to clean, compact and commercially viable fusion systems. Google's long-standing collaboration with TAE includes applying machine learning to improve plasma control and optimise reactor performance. TAE's CEO, Michael Binderbauer, emphasised that this funding is not just a boost for the company, but a signal of investor confidence in Fusion's global momentum. TAE continues to stand out for its use of boron-based fuels, avoiding radioactive tritium plus its associated waste, and its strong collaborations in the AI and simulation space with Google DeepMind. The company is now also preparing for Copernicus's follow-up, Da Vinci, which is targeted to deliver grid-ready fusion power in the 2030s. This funding is a key milestone and a strong indicator that private capital remains highly engaged in the race towards commercial fusion. 2. Fusion supply chain spending almost doubles in 2024, according to Fusion Industry Association. Next up is a brand new report released by the Fusion Industry Association that reveals supply chain spending in the fusion sector nearly doubled in 2024, showing how the industry is scaling up its commercial readiness. Total reported spending on suppliers grew from an estimated $250 million in 2023 to around $434 million in 2024. The findings are based on a detailed survey of 22 private fusion companies and 57 fusion suppliers, all of which are members of the Fusion Industry Association. The report highlights a growing number of orders for specialised components, including superconducting magnets, cryogenics, precision manufacturing and high voltage systems. These purchases reflect industry-wide preparations for the next phase of building pilot-scale fusion facilities. The results suggest growing optimism and momentum within the industry as companies prepare for the next stages of prototype construction and pilot plant development. However, challenges do still remain, particularly in workforce development, specialised manufacturing capacity and global regulatory alignment. FIA CEO Andrew Holland summed it up well. Our report shows significant cause for optimism, with the fusion industry supporting a thriving network of suppliers, proactively investing in the capabilities to deliver commercial fusion. It's clear that as more companies edge towards commercial operation, the global supply chain will play a pivotal role. Three. Wendelstein 7X sets new performance records in nuclear fusion research. Germany's Wendelstein 7X accelerator has once again made headlines after setting a series of new performance records, according to a report from phys.org. Operated by the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, the experimental device not only achieved a new world record for the triple product in long plasma discharges, but increased energy turnover to 1.8 gigajoules and reached 3% plasma pressure relative to magnetic pressure. Just to remind you, the triple product is a key metric within fusion. It sets a threshold that marks the point at which fusion power can exceed heating power input. The key was a new pellet injector developed by Oak Ridge National Laboratory that injects pellets of a frozen hydrogen into the plasma. 
These pellets are only around a millimeter in size and could be injected at variable pulse rates to achieve the optimal balance between fuel power and fuel supply. These milestones validate stellarators as serious contenders in the fusion race, particularly because they're inherently more stable and could eventually allow for steady state operation without the pulse limitations of tokamaks, as stellarators can operate continuously without requiring current to be driven in the plasma. With upgrades planned for its next operational campaign, Wendelstein 7X is set to continue pushing the envelope and informing the design of next generation fusion power plants across Europe and beyond. Four, we're definitely on the back foot. US risks losing fusion energy rates to China, industry leaders warn. Next, as reported by GeekWire, the Technology Alliance Conference held in Washington DC brought a clear warning from fusion leaders. The US risks ceding global leadership in fusion to China. Industry executives from companies like Helion Energy, Zap Energy and Avalanche Energy, all FIA members, joined a fusion panel in calling for stronger, faster government support. Speakers at the event cited China's massive state-led investment and rapid progress in fusion infrastructure, contrasting it with the slower, more fragmented approach in the United States. Brian Riordan, co-founder and chief operating officer of Seattle's Avalanche Energy, stated, Ultimately, I don't think the first to Q greater than one is going to matter. What's going to matter is who can make it economical. The call to action included proposals for regulatory streamlining, long-term funding commitments and closer collaboration between public and private sectors to ensure the US remains competitive in this transformative energy race. Five, Kyoto Fujikura advanced fusion magnet tech. Lastly is a story from Nuclear Engineering International about Japan's Kyoto Fusioneering, an FIA member, an advanced materials company Fujikura, an FIA affiliate member. They have successfully completed phase one of a joint R&D project focused on high temperature superconducting or HTS magnets. The project is funded by the UK Atomic Energy Authority or UK AEA under STEP, Spherical Tokamak for Energy Production Programme, which is led by UK AEA's commercial arm, UK Industrial Fusion Solutions or UK IFS. This collaborative effort aims to improve HTS magnet design, specifically targeting the reduction of AC loss, one of the biggest challenges in developing high-performing superconducting magnets for fusion energy systems. As part of the first phase, the team designed and fabricated seven prototype coils, with Fujikura leveraging its advanced manufacturing capabilities to produce coils featuring varied internal structures. Simultaneously, a custom-built testing setup was developed to simulate the demanding operational conditions these coils would face in the fusion environment. The coils underwent cryogenic testing, which confirmed that their current carrying and voltage characteristics closely aligned with simulation predictions from Kyoto Fusioneering. This outcome validated both the consistency of Fujikura's HTS wire and the reliability of the design parameters. The project concluded with the successful delivery of core performance data to UK IFS, marking a strong finish to phase one. The ability to fabricate HDS wire into multiple coil configurations without degrading performance was highlighted as a key outcome. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, we have a bonus about Oak Ridge National Laboratory, publishing a new paper examining ultra-high temperature ceramics for use in fusion environments. These materials can withstand over 3000 degrees Celsius and may prove crucial for handling the extreme edge conditions inside future fusion power plants. A great read if you're interested in the more technical side of fusion. Secondly, we have a bonus about Dr. Kate Lancaster discussing the UK's leadership in plasma physics, highlighting key R&D programmes in Oxford, Cullum and Yorkshire. The UK remains a central hub for academic industry collaboration in the fusion sector. And finally, I have a bonus video taking us to FIA member OpenStars Lab in Wellington, New Zealand, where one man is making a remarkable progress building a fusion system from the ground up. Definitely worth a watch. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or the bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.